Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Britt with the IRC Buzz, and I'm excited for another episode here. I'm uh, sitting with uh, one of my good friends and a coach here, Angelica. Angelica, how are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. So yep. you just got through coaching a class. Yes. How, how did that go? Friday nights are always fun. Yep. I feel like they're the end of the week and everybody's ready for one last good workout and getting ready for their weekend. So they're, nice. they're probably my favorite class. Well, Friday sweet. Nights. Well, cool. Well, this episode, we're going to dive in a little deeper just in Angelica's background, how she got involved in coaching. Uh, maybe you can learn just a little more about her um, if you uh, if you've attended one of her classes or you you know her personally. Um, but yeah, this, we just uh, witnessed a, a Friday night class. And so what's generally, I know you mentioned most of the time people are trying to squeeze in that workout. What's some other things that other things that you notice with Friday night workouts? Um, I kind of sometimes do see the wear down from the whole week, you know, so I try to kind of just keep the energy up even just to finish off a good solid week if you're not trying to come in the weekend but um I also just I don't know just kind of like spending my my Friday nights here yeah. you know because that's that's something that I hadn't really done before unless I was working out but mm -hmm. um kind of gets me to end my week pretty good too mm -hmm. so especially on the Friday long days at work yeah and at school and then I get to come here and kind of just be with my people oh nice you know, very cool. Finish the week off. Yeah, it does always seem pretty upbeat when uh, on Fridays that I've noticed. So, like you yeah. said, people are finishing out their weeks and and uh, I think getting ready to start the weekends. Right. <laughs> so, Give them a good reason to sleep in and recover. <laughs> yeah. Right. Which some of them were back here right in the morning. I know, so <laughs> I know they don't listen. <laughs> uh, awesome. Well, I guess to get started, uh, for those that don't know you, what's a little bit of background, just in general, um, maybe just where you're from, if you are from Lubbock, touch on just, you know, maybe growing up and then just maybe touch on a little bit of your fitness background. Okay. Well, um, I grew up in Rawls. I was born in Lubbock, but grew up in Rawls, 30 minutes from here, real small town, um, really just small community, but great people to yeah. grow up with. I mean, I had some of the coolest friends, coolest stories, but um, coming into Lubbock for college, I went to school at LCU and um, started working here full time to keep up with the tuition there and then um, stayed in Lubbock. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I love Lubbock. I don't think I'll ever leave. I yeah. just, I'm not a traveler anyway, but when I have gone, I miss Lubbock. Yeah. So, so no, no Lubbock in your rear view mirror. I don't think so. <laughs> like you would really have to have a, I don't know, a good solid reason, like family living somewhere else or something, you yeah. know, if my brother left or something, then maybe, but, okay. um, had Eliza here and she's been in Lubbock her whole life. So she's a city slicker, but, uh, she, loves the country too when we go out there so yeah um but and that's yeah. what's interesting about this area too that with lubbock and, and i'm from brownfield so yeah i kind of relate now one thing i will mention when you say uh, rawls is small <laughs> like when i say brownfield is small okay i i consider that pretty small but rawls like how many people like when you were there how what's the population like i think it was under 2000 whenever i was there okay yeah so it's like a quarter of brownfield right yeah. like yeah because i think brownfield when i was there was i think seven eight eight thousand i always judge it based off of what you have that in that town so like we had allsup's okay and stripes was coming into town i guess whenever i was there but yeah when i was growing up i mean we had like a dairy queen and like two grocery stores i was gonna and, mention the dairy queen because yeah. that's like a big texas staple you know texas yeah. stop sign is and now it's george's and we have those here but i mean it's just i don't know i just didn't realize how much smaller it was until i met people from even yeah the surrounding areas mm -hmm. still not even just lubbock yeah but then i got to lcu and people were like oh that's like really small yeah and they're i mean they're telling me the same thing like oh, i thought i grew up in a small town yeah and then some of them went to school in um bigger schools in that campus alone than lcu alone mm -hmm. so it was it was a culture shock for me and that's honestly why i didn't go to tech i knew that i wasn't going to be successful in a bigger mm. school or university but yeah um that small town kind of hasn't even ever really left me like yeah. i still commute community is like small, small to me yeah, yeah right right okay and so nice yeah but i graduated from there went to lcu um and then throughout my time here even i just really never found being in a gym 
like normal to me. It wasn't Mm -hmm. something that I even tried in school. Um, But then after I had Eliza, just um, getting back to normal never seemed like it was going to happen. And so then um, once I got my job with LISD, they offered a program to kind of get some money back. So then I didn't Mm -hmm. have an excuse. Yeah. I could join a gym and it wasn't going to cost a whole lot. Nice. So tried that for a little bit and just tried doing it on my own. I just felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was seeing some results, but then I would backslide a whole lot or uh, my friends changed and changed gyms. So then I was there alone and I didn't like that. Yeah. And so both of those things kind of came together when I came here. Like I knew, I knew, um, my sister was having really good success here, but then I also knew that all her friends were here Mm -hmm. and people that I had never met. So I knew it was going to be something different whenever she started to talk about it. And so, um, yeah, that's just a little bit of that background, but yeah, wasn't really in depth because I didn't have, I didn't have a background in high school or in, um, my younger years. I played basketball cause that was the thing to do in a small town. And I did cheerleading in high school because I didn't want to do the real sports, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. but then found out pretty quick that I was lifting in all the things that could have helped me then. And seeing that now is kind of Kind of crazy. But. So, so you were lifting in school? No, like I, I mean, even just lifting the cheerleaders. Cause I was usually a base or a back squat. Oh, uh, okay. With with some of the, uh, what do you what do you call them? What, what what's the official term there? Like, is it routines or uh, stunning? Stun, yeah, stunning. Yeah, stunting or stunning? stunting. Stunting. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they're stunts, yeah. right? Okay. And so, I mean, even whenever I tried out, I didn't know that it went that far. Yeah. I, I just knew that I was going to get to go to football games and be with my friends. Yeah, too, so. more more of like a social social scene. Yeah. Gotcha. And then once I got into it, I mean, I I loved the stunning. Yeah. I I didn't even really care about looking good. It yeah. was all about that. That's cool. Um, but then I. Uh, I have just to admit seeing, too, yeah, with that whole thing, like it's it's pretty intense with yeah. some of those teams. So and then just even looking back at them now, at, I mean, in my hometown, what they're doing now is pretty crazy because we were one of the first squads to do a liberty uh-huh. where you, I mean, the girls on one leg. Oh yeah, and we're all supporting and getting her down safely. Yeah, and now I mean they're just way beyond what it, we, really we were even doing. Yeah, so it's pretty neat. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So. Grew up in Rawls, did some cheerleading and played basketball. Yeah. And so you moved to Lubbock, went to LCU. And, I, you know, I know you're a teacher now. And while you were going uh, to school, you said you got hired by LISD, right? Mm-hmm. And they offered you a program. Yeah. So how did that program work? I'm just curious. It was just like a um, reimbursement at the end of every month. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they still have it now. I just kind of don't like taking advantage of stuff like that that I know other people could use mm, you know yeah. like I'm I'm okay I don't I don't need the reimbursement gotcha. sure would it be nice yeah but, um for the people that need that motivation I want those funds to be there for mm-hmm. them and so yeah it was just part of the new employee you know here's all your perks here's what you can get with us and um that second semester of my first year is whenever I finally was like okay well now I don't have an excuse I can pay for body works yeah know? And um, started going there, and it's neat that LISD does that, and it's part of your, I guess, your insurance, too. Like, you can get that as a credit, and we have to earn so many points a year to get the, you know, the lowest rate and Uh that kind of stuff, so. Cool. They promote the health and wellness there, Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, to have programs like that, because like you said, it's just... Now, financially, even if it doesn't cover a full membership somewhere, right. I mean, you you know you have that help there, and so you're more likely to pursue something. Right. So that's cool that they offer that. So when you went to Body Works, did you uh, have a set plan of what you did? Were you programming for yourself? Like, did you have a workout buddy? Yeah. What, what was that like? Well, I went to Body Works Women because I didn't want to work around guys or work out around guys. Yeah. And a friend of mine that I met at LCU was at going there. But then to get started, you know, they kind of like make everything sound real good. And you need, you really do need this help if you've never worked out before. So I got a trainer Mm -hmm. for, um, I guess the first 10 sessions or something because I had the money at the time, but then I couldn't afford it. Yeah. So she actually was really nice enough to say, here's a few more workouts for you. Thanks for, you know, using me while you could. Mm -hmm. And then I met. Um, another friend who ended up working out there too, like we would see each other, um, but never really 
went into classes together. Mm -hmm. So then I tried a class with her and kind of, I guess, dove into that part of it. Yeah. Before it was just on my own. I I don't want to inconvenience anybody else. I don't want to ask questions. Mm -hmm. So um, when we started doing the classes, I thought, okay, now this is better because I have accountability Mm -hmm. and I have people that are looking forward to see me. It was only Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And now that coach is invested too. So yeah. Tried a little bit of that, and then um, Crunch came into town. Mm-hmm. So I saw the opportunity to go a little bit cheaper, yeah. and all my friends moved over there too. But um, got into some spin and did that for a while, and that's where I was seeing a lot of like my cardio side and what I could do yeah. there, and how I could push myself there. And met a really good coach there too. Same thing, like he kept the energy up. He didn't let me, you know, slack off. He could tell what I was about to, and he'd call me out, you know? So, um, kept doing that and then came here. Yeah. So after, after like spin body works. Yeah. I was kind of in crunch and here at the same time. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Crunch. Yeah. Like six, six months of being here. I still had my crunch membership and Mm -hmm. I, I would go occasionally, or even if, um, um, another friend of mine and her husband, they had, a membership too. So if yeah. I miss something here, I could go make it up over there and mm-hmm. we'd get the looks like, why are you lifting the barbell like that? You know? Really? Yeah. Just kind of yeah. like, didn't, they didn't understand what I was doing. Yeah. And, and so it is interesting if you don't mind kind of diving deeper in that. So, oh. because were you doing some workouts that you've been doing in here? And so you would like take I them out. We had just, it was me and Val. Like we had just started the CrossFit side, uh-huh. you know, cause we had been here for boot camp. Yeah. And then I think there was something that we were working on. I think it was power cleans. And I was just like, I'm tired of doing this wrong in front of everybody. Yeah. But I want to keep practicing it. So we went to Crunch and they have like three little like barbell set up rig areas. Yeah. You know? But um, it, I, I guess it's more for back squat or that's what everybody there was using it for at the time. And so, yeah, when I was power cleaning it or still just trying to work on my form, but see myself in the mirror. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody's just like, what is she doing? Like, that's a <laughs> that's for back squat, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, so, why, yeah, why is she using it like that? Yeah. So then we moved to like the turf area where there was like an actual rig. Mm-hmm. And so I guess they do some kind of CrossFit classes there, too, or something. But yeah, kind of like I was just or in something. the wrong spot. <laughs> oh, OK, OK. I guess for it. Yeah. So. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. But. Well, and it's been, it's been a while, like for me personally, I don't know, and this might go back, show my age a little bit here in Lubbock, but do you remember when Gold's Gym was here? No. Okay. <laughs> so there was a Gold's Gym. Okay. Um, you I've know seen where, them in uh, other towns, but yeah, you know where one. Uh, Copper Caboose is at on 50th? Oh, you know what? Now I think I know you're okay, right. Okay. So yeah. there used to be a Gold's yeah. Gym there and um, there was actually a CrossFit um, small space there for yeah. a little while, but yeah. it wasn't Gold's, it was something else. But anyways, I had a Gold's Gym uh, membership there for like two years and it was hard. I just, I was never committed. Well, I didn't have like an accountability mm-hmm. partner. Well, I kind of did, but we weren't that serious. And so I don't know, every time I go in there too, I didn't know what I was doing. So yeah, that's <laughs> honestly kind of part of crunch too. I mean, the girl I was going with regularly and we, I mean, we're work, doing the same workouts all the time. Uh, her boyfriend had a, I guess, work membership at mm-hmm. body work. So mm. she started going with him and then yeah, I was at like crunch by myself. So yeah, it wasn't as fun. Gotcha. Yeah, it's hard. It. I mean, to me, it, like the thing is, it's not impossible. Like if you can, if you have good programming and you have, I think you have to have at least one person that you're meeting there right. because it gets hard um, to, to go on your own and stay committed. Um, but I know other people that do it too. And I just, yeah. I mean, I commend those people cause you got to stay yeah. pretty motivated to, to do that. Right. Right. So Okay, so you you went to Body Works here at Crunch, um, and then you started working out here Mm -hmm. more on a regular basis. What was that transition like from going, like, being in a bigger box gym now to being, like, in a small, like, you know, at the time we were uh, CrossFit affiliated, and so what was that transition like? Um, I think my very first class, or that first week, it was a free week, um, it was pretty packed. So, Mm -hmm. to me... I mean, the space felt smaller, but I, in just sitting in there, I mean, I still felt like the one person in the room that didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. And then, um, it was more of, because there were so many people, you know, we were kind of circuiting more Mm -hmm. of those workouts. Um, 
so that transition didn't feel bad to me. Like it it didn't feel like I was, um, having to start over, I guess. Mm -hmm. But then as I started to stay and then, you know, yeah, that free week, I mean, most of those people were like still testing the waters with me. Mm -hmm. And then, um, once we got into more of the, like, I don't know, I, I guess smaller classes, later on in the summer yeah, or right before school started, I just felt more at, at home. Like yeah. Once, I don't know, kind of like the beginning of the year and in the other gyms, you know, it's really mm-hmm. busy in January and then you start meeting people and then finally like it just chills out. Yeah. And in that moment, like, or in those months right before school started, I honestly thought, oh, I don't think I can do this with my work schedule, mm-hmm. you know, still trying to make another excuse not to, but I was still so bought in already mm-hmm. with the people. Like everybody was just so awesome to me. So, yeah. um, it kept me, kept me here and why I've never really left. Yeah. You know? Like I really do appreciate everybody who pushed me in the beginning mm-hmm. and helped motivate me to stay. Yeah. But, and so when you did start now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were primarily working out in the morning, right? Right. And we say morning, early morning, like 5.30 a.m. early. Yeah. Well, I mean, even then, I, I don't know why I have it in my head that we started at 5. Yeah. I felt well, like we pushed it to 5.30 later. Right. And we did. It was actually 5.15. Yeah. For yeah long, that's right. Yeah. For the And I'm time. an early bird, so I was probably here at 5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was mainly mornings and then, because the evenings were devoted to the CrossFit workouts, right. I think. Right. Yeah. At that time. Um, and then we did switch it up a little bit, like Tuesdays, Thursdays, it was mm-hmm. a class, but... I couldn't make it here on time. So yeah, Yeah. it was mornings and honestly it was a struggle. Mm -hmm. I I was not a morning person. I I mean, I knew what time I needed to get up for work and everything, but um, being able to bring Eliza here in the morning helped my Mm -hmm. schedule Mm -hmm. the rest of the time. And, and now I love it. Yeah. <laughs> now it's my favorite time of the day to work out. Yeah. Early morning. Or even coach. Yeah. Like, yeah. I like being here in the morning. So, cause I know you've mixed it up working out in the morning and the afternoon. Mm-hmm. What's are, what are some differences for you personally that, that you go through just on working out in the morning and then, yeah. you know, later on in the day? I mean, honestly, it's really just about what happened the night before, you know, like if I got enough sleep, Mm -hmm. sometimes my morning workouts are the best because I I can do what I need to here. And then I have the whole day to kind of burn off that energy or feed off of that. Yeah. Especially if it went really well in the morning. Um, But then there's some days that I just need to come here to release what happened during the day, Yeah, you know, and just kind of, um, get my mind right here. So yeah. more kind of like a stress reliever. Kinda, and just, yeah. yeah. And just, um, I mean, cause I look at the workouts way in advance, you know, since I have that chance to, mm-hmm. and, um, if it's something that I'm really looking forward to throughout the day, then yeah. sometimes that's just like, I know that's going to be my highlight of the day. Um, but more on that end, like I love the stress relief of it too when I need it, but mm-hmm. I also don't ever want to have a negative feeling mm-hmm. coming in or leaving, you know? Yeah. So, uh, as far as coming in on, in the afternoon, do you feel a difference, maybe energy, energy level wise? Like, do you feel like you have more energy in the morning or the afternoon or does it just vary? Like you said, like yeah. it depends what happens the day before. More often in the morning. Cause I think I've just managed that way for so long yeah. now. Um, but there are days where I know I need to rest a little bit more mm-hmm. and that way I'm not just coming here in the morning and just, you know, checking the boxes. Yeah. Um, but then in the afternoon, I know I'm going to go hit it pretty hard, you know? Okay. Yeah. So sure. it's just kind of how I prepare. Yeah. However, I, that's the way I am too. Week. And when I've traveled, when I've been out of town and, and I know it's like, like you said, but when I get the right amount of sleep at night, like, yeah. I love working out in the morning because right. I just feel so much more energetic and I just feel like I'm a lot more accomplished throughout the day too. Like by 10 a.m., like I've already been up six hours or right. so. <laughs> right. And so uh, it, it does feel very accomplishing, even if you just come work out and that's right. it. Like you already have it done for the day. Right. And, and so that's that's definitely a positive thing. All right. So um, you transitioned in here, started working out, um, started seeing some results. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm guessing because why else would you right. hang around? I know you said you <laughs> love the people, but do you really like them that much? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking, and my but. results in the beginning weren't immediate. Like I could see the results. Mm-hmm. It was all feeling. Yeah. And the fact that I could push through something that hard, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, cause they, even the fit workouts at the time or the boot camp workouts, they weren't easy. Yeah. And it was definitely something 
different than I had done before. So I knew it wasn't just the challenging part of never knowing how to do this type of workout. Mm -hmm. Um, but the amount of energy I had and the, the way, um, I don't know, even just, I, my body felt was different than I was getting whenever, even just doing all that cardio, you know? Um, and learning to love being sore, Mm -hmm. you know, at first I was like, surely this is going to let up. (laughs) But then if I wasn't sore, then I knew I wasn't, I wasn't pushing as hard as I could Yeah, because I felt sore for such a long time. (laughs) Right. And it's like that love hate relationship. Like you, you like it because you know that your body's feeling it you know, your body's changing and then you hate it because I mean, who, who really likes the the feeling of being sore, like the physical feeling. So that's interesting. Okay. And so, um, transitioning now over to now you're coaching. Mm -hmm. Um, how long have you officially been coaching now? Um, what is that? Like a year, almost a year and a half. Yeah. Year and a half in March. I'd say, yeah. Um, so I never really been thought that, you know, even after my first year of officially being, you know, CrossFit and, Mm -hmm. and knowing the movement, I didn't think, that that was something that I would do in the future. Yeah. And honestly, when you guys approached me and just saw it, like kind of put that seed, you know, planted that seed, I thought, yeah, I could, I can demo the movements and mm-hmm. I can, I can definitely manage people. Like I do that for right. a, le- a living and, yeah. and I can structure and I can, but the amount of, um, I don't know, knowledge base that I feel now, mm-hmm. like in that I am out of that first year of just, you know, it being new and now I'm really diving more into what do I know about this stuff Mm -hmm. is the rewarding part now. Yeah. I just feel like, um, it wasn't on my radar, but it definitely happened for a reason. Yeah. It kind of just all fell into place that way. Yeah. And being fortunate enough to take, you know, the course here in town and actually just connected with the, um, CrossFit Lubbock, um, owner Mm -hmm. for something else like it's like a hair uh, shampoo like business or something Mm -hmm. and then we just got to talking and she's asked you know what else I did or what I did for a living and stuff and I told her and she's like oh well you know we own CrossFit Lubbock here in town I said I didn't know that but had um, but I did my L1 there and yeah. she said, we, we, um, have another one coming up. I said, honestly, thank you for hosting because I probably would have never done this. I don't know if I could have gone to another city yeah. and, you know, like really, I don't travel. So yeah. like been comfortable doing that and uh-huh. then staying there and learning, you know, it would have been too much for yeah. me. I would have been overwhelmed. Yeah. So I, I mean, kind of just told her to like, thank you. And yeah, host, host more because there's a lot of people that want to do it, but don't want to travel to. Right. Especially being here in Lubbock, which, you know, we are a city, but it, it, you know, we're not the large uh, city where CrossFit typically goes to Dallas, San Antonio. Yeah. Cause y'all went to like New Mexico or something. Yeah. We went to Albuquerque. Yeah. So so. yeah, that that's right. That you did it here. So what was your experience with that? You know, it's a, it's a weekend, it's a weekend deal. Yeah. So when I, when I told my people that I was doing that and I think like there was a concert or something here in town and they were like, really, you're going to miss this for that. Are you sure? And yeah. I was like, yeah, like this is something that I've obviously like love doing. Mm-hmm. And I just, even if it was just to learn about it more, you know, um, the biggest part of that too was be- having to pass a test, you know, right. like I'm a horrible test <laughs> taker. So I was really nervous about that, but yeah, I went and stayed at my brother's house that night and I was studying and, and they're like, really, you're not like, you're not out. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I really want to do well tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So this, this might be another podcast, but are you just like this huge party animal that we don't know about? I'm not, no, I'm not. People think that. No, I'm just no, no, kidding. No. <laughs> but no, you're, you're very, you're fairly young. So I'm, I'm just joking with well, you. Well, and even I, at the time, I was just like, not what you would be doing on a Saturday night, yeah, you know? And, right. Um, it was like Friday, I had to go to bed early so I could be there Saturday and it was Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And so, yeah, anyway, I, um, was nervous about it, but I fell in love even more being there Mm -hmm. because I mean, I couldn't even tell you what all they told me there to even get me more bought in, but I knew that it still was something that was going to change my life Mm -hmm. and people around me yeah, and people who saw the benefit in just staying healthy, even if it wasn't 
coming in here and doing everything that I'm doing. But if I could model that for people to just go out and move, yeah. then I was still winning, I guess. Right. So went through that. But even here, you know, coming back and knowing that I earned it, mm -hmm. I still felt pretty intimidated coaching yeah. for a while. Um, but that just made me want to learn even more about it yeah. and make sure that, okay, I'm not giving anybody a reason to say that I shouldn't be here. Right. Um, here or outside of the gym, mm -hmm. you know, cause ever, there's other people too that have seen me do it and just, you know, just like, well, she doesn't look fit. So yeah. are you sure? I'm like, well, come, come see yeah. what we do. And then, well, and then, you know, that you said that, and, and one thing I definitely want to clarify with coaching and it's, it's taken me some time to really realize this too. And, and I've been fortunate enough too to, to visit other gyms outside of Lubbock. Not a whole lot here, but when I travel, you know, I always try to go visit a gym. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing I've learned over years. And just just the more you learn too that, um, I think there's a perception of mm -hmm. you have to be like incredibly fit. Like right. you know, you have to be like this, you know, poster bodybuilder, yeah, yeah, and like six pack and, <laughs> right. and you know, shredded. And yeah. when it comes down to it, though, with coaching is that you're really just trying to help somebody better their life, right. whether that is, you know, on a physical level um, or if a health level, which right. is even more important where um, they're doing it on, a, you know, for their health. And if it's something that, you know, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. um, you know, things like that. So for coaching in itself, it, it is something that not only with education, but, you know, experience like you're talking about as you, as you coach more, mm -hmm. just, you know, seeing people move and, and knowing like that you're in this day in, day out. I right. mean, almost every single day of the yeah. week, um, just for how much you coach here. So, yeah. um, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's a huge misconception with a lot of people, um, that, you have to be uh, fit, fit this model, I guess, because right. I felt the exact same way yeah. for the longest time. And so I'm even for me, I'm still trying to get over that of, of right. fitting this mold. So, uh, yeah, I still am, too. Like, I think I think that's just I don't know something that I hope other people see, too, that I'm always trying to learn. And even if it's somebody who like like you guys, like when you all are in my, my classes, I have to really think about what is it that I need to bring to you guys too, because mm -hmm. I'm still the coach in that class and I don't ever want it to feel like everybody's not getting what they need from me. Yeah. So even if it's just the accountability part for you guys, or if it's, you know, um, I heard this in the podcast the other day, like you tell me how many rounds you're actually shooting for and I'm going to help you get there and help motivate you to get yeah. there and make sure that your form's good, you know? Right. Um, but I don't, I just want to keep building that. Yeah. Every every time I coach, I don't ever want to get comfortable yeah. and say, yeah, I've been doing this for so long. Yeah. And then it's not going to our members or to the people that I'm coaching uh -huh. um, in a way that's going to benefit them. Gotcha. Because I'm comfortable. Yeah. You know I mean, right. But yeah. So you went through the uh, the L1 with CrossFit. Um, mm -hmm. You went through the weekend. You, you passed the test. How was the test? Um, It was a little bit more. I don't know. Like. A little bit more to my comfort level of mm -hmm. testing because yeah. it really was about, I don't know, I mean, like the form and just like even the questions about the faults and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I studied it. Yeah. So it just felt like it, I mean, it paired well oh, with what awesome. I was looking for out of the class. Yeah. And so I got lucky. Yeah. I feel like I think a lot of people <laughs> overthink it. And I mean, it, it I, I'm curious to know what my actual score was, like which questions did I miss? I yeah. wish they would kind of re release that, but um, it was, it went way better as I was taking it than mm -hmm. I felt like it was going to. But at the end of the day, I prepared for it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so I put in the work to make sure that I was going to pass it too. So yeah. it was a big relief whenever I saw that I did and yeah. realized like, okay, now we're on to the next step. What what are you going to do from right. there? Right. And I know people will go, um, you know, there's opinions on both sides that, okay, it's just, you know, weekend test. And then on the other side, it is challenging. And for me, I thought it was pretty challenging for me personally. Yeah. Um, so I thought it wasn't one thing that you could not study and just go in and pass the oh, test. Right. Unless you've been involved in fitness for years. Right. Which, you know, for both of us, we're fairly new coaches. And mm -hmm. so... We're still learning. We're still, you know, uh, evaluating movement, things like that. Right. So um, I thought you did have to prepare unless, like I said, 
you were already involved in that style of fitness. Right, so, right. Um, so that's awesome. You passed. And now, so um, now transitioning back over, you started getting coaching. Um, I know you mentioned that, you know, just being intimidated. Mm-hmm. Um, but now primarily the classes you coach right now are in the morning. And then you, like we talked about earlier, you coach tonight's class. Right. What's the differences that you notice kind of in the morning compared to like this, this class you just coached? I think sometimes the morning class feels like, um, it is the most convenient time mm-hmm. out of that day or out of their schedule for the week. Um, so I kind of have to have a different mindset of now, how is this going to kickstart your day mm-hmm. and how can I help better that? Yeah. Um, so it takes me a little bit for like the preparation. Like now I, now I'm waking up earlier than I was when I first started the morning um, workouts, but I just want to, again, make sure that, I'm giving it the same intensity and same preparation as I would an evening class, mm-hmm. even though I'm not even fully awake yet. Yeah. So I try to get up and even I need to really stop doing this, but looking at things the night before and making sure that um, whoever signed up is still going to get what they need from it and mm-hmm. seeing already try to pre-plan how am I going to accommodate yeah. what they need. But then I end up dreaming about it all night or thinking that I'm going to oversleep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so I've stopped. Yeah. No, stopped that, but preparing that's, at night. <laughs> I mean, but wow, that, I mean, you just think of how many people even coming in that they even realize like you're yeah. already thinking. And what I love too, that to me has been a huge benefit of people signing up mm-hmm. is that, that preparedness that you're talking about that yeah. where in the past people just show up and you're like, Oh crap. Well, I didn't really think of a modification yeah. here or like somebody even like, man, I need to figure out what they're going to do to really maximize this workout. Right. And so what I like about it is you do have a general idea of like, okay, well, I know I need to prepare for this or that. So yeah. That's Cause I mean, even you before, you know, when we just were working out wherever you got to, when you got here, you yeah. know, that was, I, I can't even remember what that really felt like now, but <laughs> all I can think is how did we do that yeah. then? And how was I, I don't know, efficient and moving around. Right. And how was I giving everybody attention? <laughs> it was pretty crazy. The The more I think about it, it yeah. just seems like it was, I mean, obviously a lot less structured, but now, mm-hmm. I mean, I love that everybody has their own space. Everybody, you know, like you yeah. said, for the coaches, you, you know, the, the walkways and the mm-hmm. spaces you can mm-hmm. be in without getting into somebody's space right. where they're moving and stuff. So that's interesting. Um, so as far as like coaching now, I know you did the L1, um, what's some stuff that, that you continually, like, I know we have our, our programming, Mm -hmm. um, our session plans, things like that. Um, so maybe you can touch on a little bit of that, of like how you prepare for a class and and what that looks like. And so that was the good part, even with going through the L1, you know, cause they teach you the programming and Mm -hmm. what, you know, what to kind of do there to be, um, successful, but they asked the question, you know, who does your programming? And w- we had just started with NC fit because mm-hmm. I was already coaching some of those classes to, you know, uh, kind of just get in the rhythm. And so in my mind, I was like, wait, I'm already seeing all this. Mm-hmm. What do you, what are you talking about? Is this not normal? Yeah. And so then, yeah, they, they talked about like, no, that that's kind of all front loaded for you. And mm-hmm. I don't know if I would keep be doing this still. Yeah. So I'm so grateful that we, that I came on whenever you did partner, um, because it was, um, helpful to me in the test, in the course. And then even now I just don't feel like I have all the preparing to do. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's me just again, narrowing down on that knowledge and making sure that I can present it well. Yeah. And I mean, on my teaching side of the things, you know, that's where I'm at in my career too. You know, like I've been doing the same thing for so long that I know what's there and I I can go back and read my previous plans, but how am I going to make this better and fit what my kids need or or hear what the athletes need? Yeah. Um, But some of the other things that I do, or I guess we're inspired by um, with our notes and with what the breakdowns come to us as. I just started following some of those same coaches on Instagram and even just the NC fit page and NC collective page. And, um, they always have really good feedback in the comments too. Sometimes like you just kind of have to 
dive a little bit into what the conversations are in there instead uh-huh. of, and I like it because it's all people who are like minded, you know, like yeah. they're not there to, um, you know, put the negativity in the comments there. Yeah. Asking legit questions and I don't know, bringing the good side of social media, you know, and <laughs> yeah. I, I like that. So yeah. then I got plugged in into some podcasts and stuff that NC fit kind of rolls out and, um, have been doing that a lot lately on my walks and stuff and yeah, um, trying to take advantage of the professional development that they have too. And a lot of it, I mean, it just ties hand in hand with what I do at school too. Uh-huh. And it, it actually makes me a better teacher there. Yeah. But, um, that's cool that you said that. Cause, uh, you know, Vanessa and I were talking about the same thing of just, uh, having just some of the, the preparedness that they approach it and now we're an nc fit partner and there's just been this whole other level um of knowledge and just i mean just kind of an eye opener right and that even just with the gym you know she was saying too just just as a leader in general of i mean how it's kind of done like a 180 of just yeah. not specifically in the gym like coaching a class but just even outside the gym yeah too. i mean even if you're not a coach i think you could listen in on some of it and it's just being a better person right. and how to treat people and, and how, I mean, we had that in the post the other day, how you do everything, you mm-hmm. know, and how you do anything is how you do everything. I think that is for sure their mantra. Like right. it has to be what, what they focus on the most or yeah. some, sometimes because it doesn't feel like they're slacking anywhere. Yeah. And, and, and some of those podcasts, it does get personal or it does get, um, a little bit deeper in, you know that okay these are real people this isn't just a gimmick yeah. anymore like they are act- they actually care about how you feel and how you move mm-hmm. and how you rest and how you recover and yeah um, give you the right tools for that too yeah for sure so i i mean and i reached out to mdv about that and i said i really have learned so much more just from the last three because he only had like three up at the time mm-hmm. and um just how to be a better coach because that's what his podcast really is and yeah and making sure that I'm applying that whenever I come the yeah. next week or whatever. So nice. Um, yeah, it's really been something that I, I enjoy that I can bring that to both places, mm-hmm. you know, cause I, I, I'm passionate about both of what I'm doing right oh, now, for teaching sure. and being here. Yeah. And, and they kind of go, all goes together. <laughs> I was going to say, they kind of go hand in hand. So, and so when awesome. our members get mad at me for treating them like kids, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I promise <laughs> it just meshes so oh, well everywhere yeah. else that I get lost sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, just for, for those uh, that don't know, MDV, he's basically, uh, the, like the head, uh, of fitness for NC fit. So mm-hmm. he, he does all their, um, he oversees their program and I wouldn't say he does all of it, but he oversees it. Yeah. Um, and I know he, he just started this like podcast that you just mentioned called uh, pro dev. And, um, as far as like, just as a coach, what are some things I know you mentioned the podcast, what are some other things that you kind of work on just to kind of improve your, your craft as coaching? I think whenever I like envision my classes or get prepared for what I'm doing for my members, I try again to really think about what their needs are, where they're at right now, and even empathize with, oh, I remember when I was there and I, mm-hmm. I'm really honest with them of this is what it feels like right now, or this is what you're working towards, you mm-hmm. know, and I really try to be as honest as I can with the feedback without it being something that's negative you know i don't want members or um anybody here to ever feel like i'm just gonna you know rip everything apart right but the foundation is so important to me Mm -hmm. and is what helped me stay safe you know i hear all the time where people are like how are you doing that still like you haven't hurt yourself yet you know right like no i haven't because i was coached right yeah and I can, um, you know, kind of focus more on what's needed right. versus what looks good. Yeah. And sometimes that weight looks really good, but did it feel good? Right. <laughs> Are you sure that felt okay? Yeah. So I really try to focus more on that, like safety and, um, again, their journey mm-hmm. of where they've been and where they're at. And I was lucky enough, you know, to get my first one-on-one and the on-ramp with a member and, even that was like, yeah, I, I know what it's like to not know how to row. Mm-hmm. And I know what it's like to not put weight on your barbell for yeah. a while. 
Um, but I also know that I can see you doing this right. later yeah. and, um, giving them, you know, that motivation to it, stick with it. Right. And it's hard to see it at that time when you're there in that space. Cause all of us as coaches, we've, we've all been yeah. there, like where we haven't been able to do those movements, but with consistency and just, mm -hmm. you know, having a, those daily habits and building off of them that, right. you know, you're eventually going to get there. You just got to be consistent and stay motivated with it. So yeah, that's cool that you, that you bring that perspective and that you connect with the members that way that, cause you were, you know, you yeah. were there in their shoes. So <laughs> yeah. And even there, I mean, there are times where I'm like, is that right? And, you know, I'm, I'm glad to have one of you in there just because I don't want that pride to get in the way. Like, no, I'm in, I'm the one in here right now. I'm the yeah. one in charge. And, um, this is what I think, you know, like I, again, want it to be the best experience. And I, and the real reason I stayed consistent was because it was enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And looking back, even to this little bit of time where I kind of backslid, I wasn't enjoying life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that kind of brought my, um, progress back a little bit and now that I'm getting back on track yeah again it feels good and mm -hmm. I'm doing good and um kind of feeding off of everybody yeah. else's results too and oh yeah and seeing what everybody else's um goals are for the yeah. year and just trying to push through something other than 2020 <laughs> you know so yeah yeah, that was that was a rough year, but <laughs> that is cool though. Like you did say, when you see members when they they start making those transformations, mm -hmm. you know whether it's physically or just um, you know on with them being consistent and, and fitness itself. Obviously, we have different reasons we do it, but um, it's cool to see everyone's take on like why they really like coming in and right. and like you said too. At the end of the day, it has to be fun because. Yeah. You know, when you're going through those workouts, they're never very, I mean, you're not enjoying like the entire time that, that you're, you're here, you right. know, you are going to go through some of that pain, but that's what's so good about it is getting through it. Right. And then afterwards. So, yeah. And then to be able to talk about it, you know, even on a Friday, you know, where we talked about like, oh, did we pick up a barbell this <laughs> week? You know, and knowing that you came out of all of that other stuff mm -hmm. and yeah and the in the time it sucked but <laughs> yeah yeah it, seeing how much you grow through all of those workouts is is big oh, and yeah. then you see it in other people and it's even better right that's awesome yeah well cool um i think uh, that's gonna do it for this episode so if somebody wants to reach out to you um you know if they have some questions regarding your classes. So if you could just uh, wrap up the, the times that you coach, if somebody's uh, wanted to come check out a class from you, what are the, the times during the week that you coach in the days? Yeah. So Tuesday and Thursdays, I'm here 5.30 a.m. And then my Friday night, um, 5.30 p.m. class. And um, I'm probably here somewhere in between working out. Yeah. So you can always catch me or, um, if it's something that, um, you're having trouble with in class and I'm not the coach still ask yeah, or, um, uh, reach out. Cause I'm definitely there to help. Awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, Angelica, I appreciate your time. This was yeah, fun. Thank you. And, uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds All good. right. Thanks. Thanks.